talk to you about contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. And I mean, whatever you have. Let's take bicycles for instance. You can be content if you have the best bicycle in the world. Like this one. This is top of the line. You could climb a mountain with this bike. And if you get tired of pedaling, it's got a motor that kicks in that helps you keep moving. Or maybe you have a bike like this. You can be content with an old used bike that's been around the block a few times. It may not shine like a brand new bike, but it gets the job done. But here's something that will really surprise you. That's right. You can be content with having no bike at all. It's true. Not everyone in the world has a bike lots of those people are quite content with that one. In fact, you can be content even if all you have is a box of bike parts. I mean, there's so many uses for a box of bike parts, right? I'm big and you're small. <laughs> hey, big guy, are you gearing up for a fight? <laughs> In today's story, we'll hear about the next step after contentment. I think you'll get a real kick out of this story. <laughs> this is a kickstand. <laughs> so many uses. Man! Alright, I'll see you next time. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1. Through five. As Sarah entered the cafeteria, bagged lunch in hand, Grace waved her over. Hey Sarah, we figured out the service project thing. Sarah slid into the seat beside Grace, across from Cassie and Rochelle. 
All three of them sported expensive salon haircuts and manicures. Sarah tried to smooth down her own frizzy hair. She was glad that St. Joseph's School requires uniforms because at least her clothes looked like what everyone else was wearing. Oh, right, the project for social studies? Miss Moss had required that individual groups find a service project to do during the holiday season. I looked through Miss Moss's list. This one's perfect. Grace showed her tablet screen to Sarah. Helping a refugee family? That's a great idea. Yeah, we can just buy them stuff from this list and send it to their new home. Where is the... Sarah looked at the table again, trying to decipher the name on the page. Where is the... KMB family living? Somewhere over on the east side, like Grove or some place with those rundown houses. Sarah swallowed hard. She lived on the east side when she'd moved in with her grandma. It was only because of a scholarship that she was able to attend St. Joseph's School. It says here the family needs three sets of sheets. Oh, I know. You've seen those ads for tufted owl sheets? They're supposed to be the best. Sarah's eyes widened. Aren't those sheets like $200? That's cool. My dad will give me the money. They need dishes. I'll order a full set from Macy's. My mom has a platinum card there. I'll get them a TV. Perfect way to learn English, right? Enter a credit card number and boom, service project done. The girls turned to Sarah, who avoided their eyes by staring at the list of needs on the tablet. Hey, Sarah, what are you going to send? They need winter coats. I saw these awesome tailored down jackets on sale for like $125. Um, I don't know. I'll text you all later. That evening at dinner, Sarah barely touched her spaghetti. Grandma peered across the table, her eyes bright under her wiry white hair. Now, what's wrong, Sarah? Oh, it's this service project I have to do for school. We're supposed to help this refugee family that's moving into a house over on the Grove. The Kembes. That sounds like a lovely idea. Yeah, but everyone else is ordering stuff for them. Expensive sheets and TVs and things. The only money I have right now is for bus fare. What am I going to give? You don't have to have a lot to give a lot. You didn't answer my question. Grandma smiled and reached for the worn Bible that always sat on the kitchen table. No, but St. Paul will. Sarah knew that once Grandma got a scripture passage stuck in her mind, there was no stopping her from reading it. Okay, fine. I'm listening. Let's see. It's right here in 2 Corinthians. Paul was writing to a group of churches. We want you to know about the grace that God has given to the churches in Macedonia. They have suffered a great deal, but in their suffering, their joy was more than full. Even though they were very poor, they gave very freely. In fact, they gave even more than they could. Completely on their own, they begged us for the chance to share in serving the Lord's people in that way. But that's still talking about money. The churches gave money. Listen with your heart. They gave from what they had, and they did it with joy. Well, what I have is not money. But you've got other things. Okay, I'm good at baking. I know how to use the bus and get around. I have time, I guess. Grandma beamed and her face crinkled. All good things. Reluctantly, Sarah smiled back. Okay, I'll make a list. Next morning, Sarah's friends crowded around her locker. Hey, have you decided what you're gonna buy? Well, I thought, Maybe the Kayembe family needs more than just stuff. Like how? Maybe they need help. You know, like finding the library, figuring out the bus system. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. But I do. And I Googled and found a number for their caseworker. And she said we could help the Kayembes decorate their new home for Christmas. Oh, that's a really cool idea. I found this awesome video that shows how to make Christmas ornaments from salt dough that you shape and bake and paint. You all could come to my place and help. Sure, that'd be great. I mean, it's a tiny apartment kitchen and all. You tell us what to do, we'll do it. Sarah breathed a sigh of relief. Maybe she couldn't send $200 sheets, but she could use her time and creativity and even her grandma's tiny kitchen to help welcome a new family to her neighborhood. The people in 
the Macedonian churches didn't have a lot. And yet somehow they were okay with that. They were content. And it was that contentment that made them want to share their time, talents, and resources with others. You see, when you learn how to be content, it makes you really see all the good things you have. You learn to be thankful for what you've been given and the more thankful you are, the more likely you'll want to share what you have with someone else. Like maybe I could share these bicycle parts. You know, I'll bet there's a bike somewhere that's falling over somewhere because they need a kickstand. I could give this to that bike. Or someone might need ooh, to replace their chain because theirs is old and rusted or broken. E, let's see. These might even help someone hold onto their handlebars a little bit tighter. I could give all these parts away and help a lot of people. You know, we all have something we can give. Maybe you don't have a lot, but you've got something. You may have money or stuff, or you may have strength to help your family around the house with chores. You may have talent to make people happy, or you can have time to spend with people who don't want to be alone. Honestly, you'll truly start to see what you have to give when you learn how to be content. The Apostle Paul wrote that he learned to be content through the power of Christ who gave him strength. When you put your trust in Jesus, he can give you that strength too. The one thing to remember today is this. You can always use what you have to help someone else. So think about all you have to give and be thankful. Don't forget what I've spoke in. Get it? This is a spoke. <laughs> See you around, cause it's a wheel. <laughs> Bye. Why is this not working? What's not working? I'm trying to pump up this flat tire, but the oh. pump is not working. Let me take a look. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, try it. Pump it a bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not working. Um, oh, 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 you know what? Maybe you'd have to flip down this little doohickey right here. Oh. Yeah. Try it now. Okay. A little faster. Is it working? Keep going. Now? Yeah. I think it's working! to each and everyone from far and wide. From high and low. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and this is the So-and-So Show. That rhymes. Yeah, we are so happy to welcome you into John's basement studio. Yes, come see my basement where I fold my laundry. Ah, it's folded. Find popcorn in the oddest places. Mmm, chewy. Find a place to cry alone after watching a sad movie. Why? 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 Why'd you have to let the sadness overtake you, Artex? Why? Or sometimes, cry with your friends. Why didn't you fight it, Artex? The story is never ending. Why won't the story end? <laughs> It's so sad. So very sad. We've got a great show today. John, I yes. must ask, what does the word upcycle mean to you? I'm not sure. Oh, a unicycle has one wheel, a bicycle has two wheels, a tricycle has three wheels. An icicle has no wheels. <laughs> True! But an upcycle, is it a bicycle you ride up? Nope. You know what recycling is, right? 
Reduce, reuse, recycle. Yes, but instead of recycling or throwing something away, upcycling means you can make something into something new or better. Okay, upcycle. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, okay where do you keep your recycling? Uh, right here. Oh, good. Well, let's dump it out. Awesome. Okay. Oh, good. Perfect. All right. It's Let, in here somewhere. Yeah, it's great. Now yeah. let's uh, let's upcycle this stuff. Let's make something better. Do you have what? Do, what do you want to? Self-propelled cars. Okay. We'll make self-propelled cars, and then we'll race them. Oh, it sounds fun. Let's montage. Woo! Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, mine's got a mouse trap. Ooh, dangerous. Hey, yeah. don't try this at home without supervision, kids. Exactly. You ready to race? Sure. See you on the track. What? Oh. Gentlemen, start your engines. I am so confused. On your mark. Get set. Go! Whoa! Whoa! My mouth trap! Snap! Get it off my fingers! Ow! <laughs> Looks like I won. Upcycling is fun. Yeah, fun. <gasps> It's Bible story time with Kellen. How's it going, Kellen? Not bad, gentlemen. You got a story for us today? I do indeed. Well, by all means, take it away. Yeah. Our story today comes from a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a church in Corinth, which was a city in Greece. Paul wrote about Jesus' followers in Macedonia who gave what they had to help the church in Judea. And here to help me talk about them are my friends from... Perspective. The Apostle Paul helped start churches all over the place. Hi, I'm Paul. Paul would write letters to the churches helping to teach and encourage them as they grew. One of the things Paul wrote in his letter to the church in Corinth... <clears throat> I've got it from here, Kellen. Take it away. Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the churches in Macedonia. They have suffered a great deal. Now, we don't know how the people in Macedonia had suffered. Some people think it could have been a famine. So, we got anything for dinner? All we have is some stale bread and a handful of beans. Same as last night? Yep! It may also be that the Macedonians were being treated badly because they followed Jesus. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Is that a Macedonian Christian? <laughs> it's them again. Yeah, and uh, if we can be strong. We can be strong. We have an amazing God Life's who loves just us. just gonna get harder for you. We'll take everything you have. Yeah. We'll punish you for praying and worshiping your God. <laughs> the fact is, we don't know exactly what was going on with the Macedonian church or why they were suffering. But we do know this, Paul. But in their suffering, their joy was more than full. Even though they were very poor, they gave very freely. Completely on their own, they begged us for the chance to share in serving the Lord's people in that way. They did more than we expected. They were poor and they were suffering, but somehow they had joy. And even though they didn't have much to give, somehow they gave freely. Did you hear? The church in Judea needs our help. Oh yeah? Yeah. We gotta do something, but we don't really have much to give. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, do you still have that can of nickels under your bed? I do, yes. And now, uh, what about you? Do you still have that ultra rare beanie boo you wanted the carnival? I mean, it's gotta yes. be worth something. Yes, right, right. Paul? Are these worth something? What is it? Yeah, this will help a lot. Can you afford it? Yeah, uh, our god has already given us so much. We just want to give back. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad. Definitely didn't have nickels or beanie boos back then, but I think you get the idea. Even though the Macedonians didn't have much, they were content with what God had given them. So content that they were willing to share what they'd been given. Now, what does that mean for us? Not all of us have a lot of money we can give, but there are other things you can give to others. I'm pretty good at piano, and sometimes my little brother has a tough time learning, so I could help him practice. There's a kid in my class at school that my friends were making fun of. I can tell them that they should stop. Sometimes my granddad likes to tell me stories, and even though they're stories I've heard before, I can still take the time to listen. We all have something to give. We may have money or stuff. We may have talent or time or strength. But like the Jesus followers in Macedonia, we should look for ways to share what God has given us. Thanks for helping tell the story, everyone. Amazing. Okay, anytime. Later, Kellen. Of course, see you later. See you later. Wow, so good. Yeah, didn't the kids do a great job? Yeah, and that was a great story too, Kellen. Absolutely. You know, it's crazy that even though they didn't have a lot, they gave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of times those with the least amount of money or stuff can be the most content. Maybe when you don't have a lot of stuff, you can more easily focus on the things that really matter. I never thought about that. Yeah. But it's important to remember that no matter how much you have, you always have something to give. No doubt. We'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks, Kellen. See you, fellas. You know what? I got it. it it's like upcycling. What is? Well, when we take what we have and we share it with others, it's making things better. Upcycling. Hey, good point. Yeah, it happens occasionally. Reveal the question. How can you use what you have to help others? Yeah, yeah, you've already heard some ideas from Kidspective, but why don't you think up some others? And, mm -hmm. and remember, it doesn't have to involve money. No, it can be time. Or your talents. Or your creativity. Or, or your courage. Yeah, wait, we're giving them too many ideas. Oh, right, right. You, you answer the question. How can you use what you have to help others? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. See ya. Laundry. Why doesn't it work when I do it? Yeah. It's not even plugged in. Oh, that's why it wasn't working. I just, I just needed it dull. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing Charlie Chaplin over there?